We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Ottawa, Kansas. We get to visit with the Ottawa Braves and Coach Nick Davis heading into his third season with the program. Coach, progress from year one to year two, not bad there, two and eight, and heading to six and six. You make the playoffs last year as well, and you win the Bissell Division in the inaugural year of crossover and divisional play there in the KCAC. So congratulations on that. Tell us a little bit about last season. Yeah, you know, I think we kind of had a, a breakout year. Again, we'd like to have a, a little better record than what it indicated, but uh, we played some pretty tough games. You know, Southwestern, when we played them to start the year, uh, we had the ball um, on the last possession with a chance to win. Uh, Evangel, we had the ball inside their 10-yard line on the last possession with a, a chance to win. Um, obviously, we squeaked out one against uh, Bethel when they were in a top 25 team in the country. So, uh we felt like we could play with anyone really at any point. Uh, we did get blown out by McPherson after our starting quarterback got injured and uh, um, kind of got routed there, but we bounced back um, the next week to almost beat um, Advangel and then uh, kind of went on a run once we got into div divisional play and uh, were able to take out Kansas Wesleyan there um, our second to last week, which actually beat us up. I'm sure they were probably pretty beat up as well. Going into that that Tabor game, we were down about four starters, and knowing that we were going to be in the playoffs, we uh, elected to sit those guys, or you know at least uh, three of the four guys, and then uh, um, lost a tough one right there, and then got into the playoffs, which was uh, pretty cool because it's the first time we've done that since uh, 2014 at the school. Um, I was a graduate assistant here when uh, we went on a heck of a run where we went to the playoffs for four or six straight years and won four championships under Kent Kessinger. So uh, um, in the playoff game, we had a seven nothing lead and then ended up, uh, they'd put up 35 unanswered points. But if you were to watch that game, I think it's a, a lot closer. Um, we had a touchdown called back on an offense or pass interference. We dropped a touchdown in the end zone, um, missed a field goal. Um, so I think, uh, you know, a few more plays, we would have been a lot more, um, competitive on the scoreboard. I think Dort would go out and say that we were a pretty competitive team against them. Yeah. Well, and it, and it did look that way that day. And, and of course the big thing coach, you're playing in the second season and you know, you, you did what it took to get to that point. So congratulations to you all on, on a fantastic and, and successful year. I know you want to continue to improve. So that takes us then to the spring. And you're going to have some returnees. You're going to, you you graduated a number of players as well. How how was the spring for you all in year three? Yeah, it was nice. Uh, really, um, over my three years at Ottawa, obviously I was the head coach for uh, these last two years, but I was the defensive coordinator before taking over as our head coach. And we've just had a lot of staff turnover. Even um, since being the head coach, I've had three defensive coordinators. Um, which is pretty cool because they've gone on to take bigger and better jobs. Um, mm -hmm. But it's always not great for uh, the kids. <laughs> um, and luckily, we, we keep the same terminology. And then over that time, we've had three different offensive coordinators. So for the first time um, since I've been our head football coach in the spring, or really since I've coached here at, at Ottawa, uh, our offensive coordinator and our defensive coordinator returned, which was uh, really good. Uh, we were able to break in. Uh, a transfer quarterback that we think is pretty special in uh, Taylor Eggers. He actually played for Coach Anderson at um, William Jewell, um, started there for a few seasons, Division II William Jewell, and uh, got a few guys back that uh, were banged up from injuries, so that was pretty good. And uh, you're going to ask me later, but we were able to break in some new running backs because I think we lost about uh, 1,800 yards in rushing off of a roster from last season, and then uh, – we're able to break in a few new defensive backs and uh, a few D linemen. You know, by the way, to your point that you were talking about the the coordinators, you know, offensive and defensive coordinators, I think it says a lot for the program when there is that kind of turnover that, you know, not only are you doing a good job as the lead man at the helm, but you're bringing in the right people and they're able to, you know, have a good season, go on to something that you, you talk about bigger and better, but it sounds like things are going all right there at Ottawa as well. So let, let me ask the question you just alluded to Went Ruth 1200 yep. plus yards by himself. What a season he had last year and, and Maples at quarterback, you were second leading rusher. You lost your top three in that category from last year. So yeah, you, you've got a lot to replace there. Tell us a little bit about the ground game and the offense as a whole. 
Sure. You know, I mean, the first thing I'm going to mention is uh, we bring back actually five guys on our offensive line that have started over their career at Ottawa and actually six um, guy, actually, sorry, we bring back six. One guy is going to play defense for us next year, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, but uh, five guys that have started for us, all five, I believe have been all uh, KCAC um, either all conference or all honorable mention players. So, we were seventh in the country in rushing, and we had three phenomenal backs, but I think um, we have a pretty special offensive line and, and one that's grown because a lot of these kids um, had played when we weren't very good and, and we were able to run the football uh, very successful. We protected Billy last year, only gave up 10 sacks. So, uh, you know, on the offensive line, I think we have one of the best offensive tackles in our conference in, in Donovan Henry. Um, first year starter last year. Um, I think the guy's f phenomenal. His brother is actually Derek Henry, who plays for the Ravens. So uh, Donovan's a, a pretty special player. Uh, we bring back Joe Farias, who actually started our first three games of the year last year and then had a season ending injury. So then we inserted TJ Osa, who didn't skip a beat, and he was an honorable mention all KCAC guy. Uh, Trevor Concher is a will be a five year starting center for us, one of those COVID guys. And uh, we actually bring back a guy who uh, was all conference player in 2019, Blaine Saxton, um, who kind of decided, hey, I'm going to go try to this division one thing at Oklahoma State. And, and one thing didn't work out. And his brother, actually, we recruited to come and he's like, I'm going to give this thing one more shot. Uh, so he was a heck of a player for the Braves in 2018 and 19. So we bring back um, really five guys that have started for us, um, you know, in the last five years. You, when you're talking about bringing back players from the 2018 and 2019 <laughs> season, I, and, and really, you know, it, it, it's funny because with with the COVID year that's been in there, players are are playing into their you know 22, 23, 24 years old, and so it, it's if you have somebody that that you can count on like that, I mean, props to you for that and, and having that offensive line with that kind of stability and that kind of experience. That's I guess that's the proper that's the that's the <laughs> euphemistic way of saying it experience so they they bring yeah. that to the table but but congratulations for having that kind of group coach well on on the defensive side of the ball which by the way we're we're visiting now with nick davis from ottawa here on midwest sports net and i encourage you please subscribe to the channel we enjoy talking about small college sports and more throughout the midwest and beyond aj hemphill your leading tackler from last season a linebacker he's coming back uh to be a part of that defense some new names some old that have moved on though yeah, AJ is a phenomenal football player, um, and, and I think uh, we were two and eight, and he was second in the country in tackles. So no one really wanted to make him an All American or a first team All Conference player as a sophomore. Uh, you win a few more games, and the guy produces the same amount of tackles, then you're able to be a, a first team All American. So uh, uh, we're hopeful that he can uh, produce just like he has for the last two seasons for us. He's a phenomenal football player. Uh, we were, you know, we lost Kevin Wade and Kyle Reynolds and Tony Davis in our secondary, who were very good football players for us. Uh, James Gladden was a really good defensive lineman for us, Samad Ali. Um, so we lose five starters. But the thing about us, like, and it was really just like that on offense, like we've lost starters, but we have nine guys on offense who have started football games for us in that championship run. And we have nine guys on defense that have started games for us. So. I feel like we're able to reload a little bit. Um, we have a Division II transfer, um, Ethan Ferrantes, that uh, played actually at William Jewell. Uh, we have a few of these guys, Jordan Clay. I know we kind of skipped over the skill guys on offense, but Jordan Clay started running back at William Jewell for Coach Anderson, and we actually have Kavion Long, who was a wide receiver. So we got four guys that started football games for uh, William Jewell, that uh, that connection with Coach Anderson, our offensive coordinator, um, kind of brought them back, and, and they just want to win football games. So uh, that's pretty exciting. We bring back Christian Coggs, who will be a four-year starter for us at D-line. We bring back uh, Preston Greenwood, who started for us. We bring back uh, Peyton Green and our D-line, who started for us last season. Um, Kalen Kemp, who started for us on our offensive line, was our long snapper, and He's behind a kid who started five years at center and Trevor Concher. So we're like, let's move this guy over to D-line. And he did a phenomenal job. So I think he'll mix it up. Um, we had a, a freshman who started 
Um, Jalen Hines, a few games for us at linebacker. Um, uh, Jensen Riffle will be a four-year starter for us at linebacker. And uh, we bring back uh, three safeties with some playing time. And uh, Mendoza, Will Agnew, and uh, Christian Obergon. And then uh, Elijah Han Blewett started for us at corner. And I think he's going to be a really special player. And then we uh, split time with uh, Jalen Thatcher and uh, uh, Christian, or uh, my man Hing at uh, corner. So we bring back a, a lot of experience, even though we, we lost five guys that started football games for us. I appreciate that, Coach. Now let's let's time time out for just a second. Let's go back. Let's. I'm going to ask the skill position players sure. to forgive me for, for going ahead. <laughs> But we do like to promote that the the offensive line as much as we can, especially during the previews. I mean, that's that's when you just talk about it the sure. most. And so I, I I got caught up in the offensive line there. So I'm asking this. Hey, me too. Guys. Me too. But uh, you know the the moms that are going to listen to right. it will not be excited. So we, we talked about quarterback. Yeah. Um. Uh, we we have Taylor. We have a young man, Jonathan Reyes, who's been with us uh, for a few years. So they'll battle it out in camp. Um. We have um, we, we talked about Jordan Clay, the transfer running back. We have uh, three uh, freshman running backs that will be sophomores for us, and Hagen Johnson, um, Adrian Boyd, and uh, um, Leek, or sorry, Malachi Hudson, that did a phenomenal job. And again, I think with that veteran offensive line, we just need to clear the way and give it to some talented players. And, and we recruited. You know, you run for the seventh most yards in the NAI. Every running back in the country wants to join your roster. So I think we're about 14 deep at running back, and they're all pretty good. Uh, we bring back our two starting tight ends, and Eric McQueen and Isaac Gibson, who rotated the whole entire year. Both will be seniors for us. Um, we bring back um, DeAnthony Curtis, who was a freshman all-conference player for us, at outside wide receiver. We bring back Trevor Smith, who played for us, Antonio White, who started for us, who will be a senior, uh, Rowdy Keith, who uh, came back to the program after sitting a year out from us, but started as a freshman for us. We talked about uh, KV on Long, um, who started for Coach Anderson at William Jewell, um, and uh, Jaden Johnson, who was an all-conference player for us as a freshman. So we bring about six guys back um, that have caught passes for us, um, two tight ends that have blocked. No one that's got really a carry in a varsity game, but we got some talent and um, we got a transfer who started at the division two level um, and, and a quarterback who started at the division two level. And that, that is something I like the way you say that too, because I, if you're going to have that kind of success running the ball, I, that in and of itself is going to be a, a recruiting tool and it's going to be something. And, and we live in an era in which, you know, people can make that adjustment and go, I, I want to play for, that coach right there, I know he's going to run the ball. I may get my opportunity. You you were talking about your long snapper and and that uh, it, he you, he's switching sides and getting over on the defensive side. And I think that's great too, coach. By the way, if you have the talent there, find a way to utilize that talent. And you do that. But uh, long snapper coming back as well as uh, Red Anderson, starting kicker from last year. For, so special teams, uh, you have some of your strengths returning. Yeah. Um... Rhett's a, a really good kicker. We put him in some tough spots to make some really long field goals um, in some bad kind of weather conditions. But uh, we're we're excited. I don't think, you know, if you look at his statistics last year, that doesn't represent the type of player he was. He led our team and uh, led the conference in touchbacks from a kickoff ratio. So he's definitely got the leg. Um, he's really accurate. He kicked a 62-yarder in, in spring practice. Um, with a live rush so the young man's really talented um he transferred to us from from michigan um we just got to be able to put him out in some better situations so he can be more successful with with the stats but i would kick a 62 yard field goal with him on fourth and 10 every single time if i have the chance um so he's did a nice job we, we did lose our punter um but we have a young man named uh joshua yuri hinta who was probably just as talented as Trevor Bywater, our punter. Um, and it was a unique year for punters in our conference because I don't think Trevor got the recognition, but he was second in our conference in punting and like 13th in the country in, in punting. But in our conference, we had like seven dudes in the, in the top 25. So they all 
voted on who had the most uh, coffin corners and things like that. But I'm like, this guy's got a pretty good average. Um, so that's kind of our, our special teams unit. We actually bring back um, DeAnthony Curtis, who uh, was really good as a return guy. He was in our honorable mention in our conference. And, you know, our conference, the way we do all conference is a little bit was unique. The other divisions, the other conferences have the multiple divisions usually do two divisions of all conference. We did one um, all conference team with 12 teams. So a lot of the time, like we, we had, six all conference players and 13 honorable mentions that I think would have been first or second team. If we were to do a uh, divisional all conference team. That's it's tough to find spots to fill or to, if, if the spots aren't there, it's, it's tough to be able to, to get all those players in that, that you figure probably warrant that attention crossover season gets underway and it's not that far away. I mean, we're looking at uh, a little more than two months now, August 31st, uh, still, I, I'm I'm saying crossover season in the KCAC a little more smoothly. It's taken me a little bit to get used to saying that, but you all are going to be at home taking on Southwestern. You mentioned that game last year, a tough opponent. You go on the road for the first time during the year at Friends and the rest of the crossover schedule. The Bissell division gets underway on October 19th. It's going to be homecoming, and St. Mary comes to town for that. So tell us a little bit about your season. I mean, I think the KCAC, every team last year, you could probably go out and say um, got better as a football program. You know, Bethel hadn't had the, or Bethany hadn't had the success that they um, had had like and last year was a year where they put together some wins and, and had some breakout performance and, and were really competitive. So if you look at maybe the team statistically that was record was the worst in our conference, um, they got better and, and Sterling got better. And, and Mike Gardner at Tabor, man, um, he could have a, a down year and he can beat anyone. They, they almost beat Evangel. They did beat us. Um, they played tight with Kansas Wesleyan. Um, they're always in a game um, with Coach Gardner there at Tabor. I have the utmost respect for him. Uh, there's not an easy week in the KCAC. Um, other leagues, you may be able to, when you're the top dog, um, the perceived top dog, pencil in and wins and uh we have not beat Tabor in the last two seasons um so they're always tough Kansas Wesleyan is going to be a phenomenal football program uh Sterling um is on the rise St. Mary's is on the rise Avila's got phenomenal football players so the Bishop division is is super tight and as you look at last year's results anything really can happen in, in any game mm-hmm that, that much is certain. Well, success. You all had a lot of success last year. So congratulations again on that and success to you all this year. We'll follow the Braves through the course of the season. Ottawa football getting ready for 2024. And thank you very much, Coach Nick Davis, for being with us here on Midwest Sports Net. We really appreciate you taking time. I really appreciate everything you guys do there at Midwest Sports Net uh, to um, really elevate the NAI and uh, especially the, the KCAC. Uh, you've done a lot of these interviews with the coaches. So uh, we wish you luck and, and safe travels this fall as you guys go out to different games. And hopefully at some point in the next uh, year or so, we can get you out to Ottawa to a game because we got a phenomenal uh, spot to watch a football game. <laughs>